So Perry is going to help me do this video today, clearly. I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to make paper cranes, which I'm astounded that I never made this video before, and I'm sort of sorry for that because it's a very uh, good way. I might have, actually. I don't remember. Um, it's a good way to... Um, sort of actively meditate um, because you have to concentrate on it and um, it's using multiple senses. It's using vision. It's using, using feeling of touch. Um, you know, if you really want to crank it up, you can... Um, which I found very effective for myself if I was trying to really break a cycle of, of um, racing thoughts was to listen to something um, that related to whatever I was doing physically with my hands. I mean, it was, sounds really weird, but what really worked for me, like I was, how can this work, is if I was literally coloring with crayons because they smell um, a picture that uh, related to something I was listening to in a, a podcast because it literally used all five senses at once and it just overloaded my brain and then I couldn't continue with my racing thoughts. Anyway, so this is an incredibly bastardized version of making um, paper cranes, um, which I was taught by um, some Japanese school children. I sort of adapted because I've done it for years and years. So this is not the official way. This is the quick and dirty, sort of Americanized way. Um, you have to have perfectly square paper. I've done this with every kind of paper. Um, Organi paper, um, there's two different kinds actually. This uh, has sort of both kinds. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how with a plain one and then do a second one with the thicker. The thicker the paper, the harder it is to make a really tight uh, fold um, so I would start with thinner but again I mean I've even cut a square into um, like just normal writing paper um, and how to do that is you take a corner and you fold it over and there you go cut it there's a square um, anyway but you know origami paper is prettier so it it helps, again, to jam the circuits, and it's also, especially, like, this is the thinner kind, as opposed to the thicker kind. Um, this is thicker, it has a texture, I don't know if you can, there's no way you can see the difference. Take my word on it. Um, yeah, it's worth it to, to get some paper that's designated for that, so that, it, again, it's, it's like there was a candle that I used to listen, or listen to, oh my god, there was a candle it was actually two candles. I used to burn together at the same time because it was a specific scent. If I burned them both, there was no way I would ever come across it in, um, you know, the world naturally. Nobody's going to burn those two candles together. Uh, so it was a specific scent that really came to be this is a relaxing thing for me to smell this candle. Um, it's the same thing if you have origami paper and you're doing it consciously, I'm trying to relax. I'm trying to not think about X, Y, and Z. I'm trying to be mindful and, and focus on what I'm doing. Um, it helps you to have some designated sort of specific equipment so that you really do associate um, relaxing. I think Perry's coming back. Uh, with whatever you have in your hand or whatever you're smelling or whatever you're doing. Um, anyway, let me get down to it. So first thing to do, you take the square and you fold it in half. And I'm not wearing my glasses, so this is going to be a little bit of doing. It really does help to take the time to actually, especially in the beginning, line it up right. Make sure that it, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it makes it faster in the end if, if it does because you can still sort of tweak the folds um, and force it to sort of fit, but it's just easier if it's just starting with good things. So you fold it once, and then you fold it back into a square. That's Pansy. She was actually cuddling with Percy this morning, but she's not liking Perry right now. Anyway, um, so you have a square. The next thing, again, this is going to break everybody's heart that does real 
origami because it's way difficult and I do a cheat version is that you're trying you, you're going to fold it in half and what you want to do is make sure that you take the the corner that is the most to the least and that you leave the the four edges of the paper that are completely open are still those are the ones that are going to get folded in half. I'm sure I'm not making this any sense. So this side over here, this is one fold. This is only one. Here is two. Down here you have all four corners. And then you fold this corner to this corner like this. And if you do it the wrong way, you'll know very obviously when you open it up. Uh, just refold it and fold it the other way. It's not that big a deal. But this is this is what you want to have. So then you get this triangle. Again, I give it a good good creasing because now we're going to start opening it up again. Next step is open the entire thing. So you're back to flat. And as you can see, it sort of almost wants to fold on its own. You have these two up, these three down, these two down and that one up. This is the oddball guy. You want to basically push it out so that it goes the other direction, which is really easy because you did a hard fold. There, like that. And then it just wants to fold on its own. So you take the points that are in and you bring them up to the one that it wants to lay down on, and then the same with the other thing, so that you basically turn it back into a little square. But, so, this is the corner that has turned it around. This is the corner that has nothing open. Both of the edges have two. The very bottom has four layers. Here's where it starts getting tricky. You take one of the sides that has the two. You don't take both together. You take the top one. This corner, this edge, sorry, this edge here, you want to fold it so it's lined up with this midpoint line like this. And you fold it up like that. Push it down. Do the same with the other side. I move this thing left and right and all over the place um, just because it's, it's easier for me to, to do it like this. You can just keep it straight if you want. So I'm trying to get it lined up with that middle line there. It is slightly off, the one that I made, because if it's absolutely perfect, there will just be a straight line at the top. Anyway, whoops, there. And you flip it over and do it the same thing to the other side. You're trying to take the most outside edge, line up with the middle, both sides. Oh, dust on my fender. And so what you end up with is something that looks like a kite. So you have this elongated triangle and then this sort of stubby triangle on the top. You take the stubby triangle and pull it down, forward, over that bend. Like that. This is not very even. But you'll see, I'm not doing it perfectly by any means and it's going to come out okay. Then you flip it over. Open one side and the other side, so you get a diamond shape. And then you take and open it up. This is where you'll definitely know if you got something backward. And if you did, just either redo it or grab another piece of paper. You want to take the one side, pull it all the way up, open up the edges, and just pull it all the way flat. What you're trying to do is get something that looks sort of like first a canoe and then a diamond shape, so I usually start pressing on the edges immediately because, again, once you've got those solid sort of things, and it, the solid folds, it, it sort of does it on its own. It's not perfect by any means. You do have to refold everything. So they refold, refold and then you get this elongated diamond shape. It would be completely flat if I had done it perfectly, but I didn't. And then you flip it over and do the same thing again. Push that triangle up. That's the belly of the bird, by the way. 
open it in two. That, that's the diamond shape that was on the other side. And you take that corner and pull it up. Anybody that's, read, that's seeing this and going, um, you're kind of a crap teacher. Hmm. Oh well, yeah, I'm kind of, sometimes I am a crap teacher. Straighten out those folds and then refold it and it will go flat. Perry is up there sneezing or coughing or something. Same side. Bend it up, bend it over, bend it over, fold it over. And then this side down here so that it's this flat diamond shape. One side will be closed. Point that to the top. The other side will be open. You can sort of walk the legs. Point that toward yourself so that you're oriented. And then you're going to do that same type of fold where you take the outer edge to the midpoint. It's a little bit harder because you've got a little, two layers instead of one and also it's smaller. But it's the exact same thing. You fold it over. I always go to the point first because that's the one where it's the least forgiving. And then move up. Fold it flat. Then do the other side. And again, you can do this straight. I always make it easier for myself. For myself, it's easier to turn it around so that I'm folding away from me. Flip it over, do the same thing again, and you take the outer edge to the midpoint. Up like that. Do it again. Over the other side, outer edge to the midpoint. So you get this sort of cow lily kind of shape. And then we're going to open it, basically flip it inside out. So you take the one side and you turn it over, flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Open that one edge. There. So now what's pointed toward you are the, the two that you can't open and the two that you can are up here. Then what you're going to do is take this long triangle that's not split like that and fold it up, and there will be a natural bend place. It's as basically as far as you can go, and it will line up to the top like that. There is a fold right there that you're refolding. Flip it over, same thing. Take that, fold it up. You're basically done making the bird. But it's the same thing. You're going to take this here, and you're going to fold it into itself along that midline. Just like that. It's starting to look like it should. And then you pull it out so that, can you see this line here? It lines up with that line right there and pinch it down. This side, now this is a little wonky because I was a little off. That's okay because that's going to be the head because that sticks out anyway. It's very forgiving. It automatically gives you a place where if you didn't quite line up perfectly, it'll give you a place for it. So you should be able to fold right over the midline. I can't because I didn't do it perfectly. That's okay. So these two edges I'm going to pinch together so that they line up with each other straight up to where it doesn't let me do it anymore and then tip it down because that's the head. You need a head anyway. And the same thing, you pull it forward so that it lines up with this line right here. There it is. And there's the basic bird. Now, there's two ways to open it. I'm going to pull this head down a little bit more. There. Just sort of pinch and tweak it. There it is. Um, you can just gently take the two. Now, that's the other thing is, is that I've seen a lot of people. I never saw the people in that I talked to do this. They they very formally like make a bend in the wing somewhere to bend it down. I've never seen anybody do that, so I don't do that. I keep them straight. But you take the two wings and you very gently pull over and it will inflate the belly. But 
if that doesn't work, if it doesn't inflate the way that, you know, see the little dome right there, sometimes it's flat or it's whatever, there's also, there's a little teeny hole right there and you can literally blow it up and just puff on it and it will blow up. So there's one. I'll do it again so that you can see it much faster um, because the faster you do it, the, the easier it is to do. Here's the paper. This is a one-sided paper, so make sure that you have the side that you want out on the bottom so that it's actually visible when you do the folds. So first, fold in half. Fold in half again. And again, I've been doing this for years, so yes, I can do it pretty fast. Then you fold it into a triangle by taking corner to corner. Give everything a good tug to make sure that all those folds are solidly. And there, open the whole thing up. Let it fall. Find the one fold that's the opposite. Push on it so that it will allow itself to be refolded. And then pull the whole thing together and flatten it back into a square. You take the open side up, take the one side, and you put the edge right against that midline, which is hard to see because this one has decoration on the paper. Same thing on the other side. Take the edge straight to the midline. Flip it over, do it again. Edge to midline. Edge to midline. Make sure those creases are solid. Take the top triangle, flip it down. Triangle side down, open up into the diamond, and then pull it up. And let it fall, sort of push it into place so that it falls along that midline. Same with the other side. Flat. Flip it over, do it again. Push that triangle up, open into that diamond shape, pull it up. Flatten it into the midline. Flatten the other side into the midline. Oh, look, those flowers kind of line up. That's neat. That type of thing doesn't usually happen with a pattern. Okay, to get to this one. This is the open end, so you flip it over, fold to the midline again. See, it's, it, this is why you can, once you learn how to do this, it's fairly easy. It's because you're basically doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Flip it over, fold to the middle. you basically turn it inside out. So you fold over this side, flip it over and fold over this side, flatten it, and then you pull down the points. Pull down the points. Start with the side like this side didn't line up again. This side lined up better. Start with the side that a little bit better, and pinch that shot. Again, it's harder to do with a thicker paper. Decorated paper is thicker. And then you pinch it down at the bottom once you have lined up that thing. That's the tail. This will be the head, which really doesn't want to fold because I've got some wires on. Pinch, 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 and then pull down the head like that. What was that? I think it's Pixie. Yes, it is Pixie. 
we'll pull it down so that it's lined up right there. Pinch, 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 pinch. Everything is pinched. Oh, this one went back up. Let's see, it doesn't want to stay. But then when you open it, there it is, another, another one. Um, I can do them really fast. Um, that's because I've been doing them for years. Uh, it took a long time. When I started doing them, what I actually did was, and somewhere I have the little kit still, I'm sure, because why wouldn't I? And I, I literally would have one for each step. So, and I numbered them like, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, so that I would learn how to do them, and now I just know. And this is what they look like. And as far as the ones that I would put on the Christmas tree, I would have the bigger paper, so like this size square instead of this size square. Um, the smaller the paper, the harder it is for them to do. Um, but that's how you do it, and if you're so inclined... Um, again, you really have to sort of pay attention to what you're doing because it's simple, but you get them upside down and they don't quite work. Um, you know, and I don't know, it, it's, I think, effective for me, it's been effective for other people to do stuff like this that's repetitive that you don't have to put a lot of brain power into, but you do have to pay attention to what you're doing and, um, and uh, it can be a good meditative process. Anyway, I'm going on and on as I usually do. So I'm going to end this.